Welcome, ladies and lads, to Daniel Danielson's School of Photogrammetry, Photogrammetry Sun. That's what I'm going to use to get this uh, real dimension object into the head of uh, this computer guy. First, the basics. Photogrammetry is really neat. It's really, really neat, actually. Here's how it works. You take a real life object, you take loads of pictures of it from different angles. Whoa! <clears throat> take loads of pictures of it from different angles. So you take those pictures and bring them in to the computer. And from what I understand, the software takes those pictures and it identifies features on the object that are the same in different photographs. And then the ghost of Pythagoras swoops in triangulates the position of the points on the object compared to the position of the camera. Um, generates a point cloud from that and then the geometry forms naturally from the ectoplasm that he leaves behind. And then the pictures are reprojected onto that mesh and you're done. Now, of course, I have already messed up because my lovely little guy here, Terminator head, is reflective. And that's a problem. In the pictures, the computer is going to identify a feature in a photograph and it's going to think it's on the surface of the object. But in reality, it's really just something that's reflecting off of the surface of the object. And that's not going to stay consistent enough in the different angles to summon the ghost of Pythagoras. There is apparently something called a 3D scanning spray, which makes surfaces perfectly matte. And then supposedly it evaporates without leaving any residue. But I don't mess with the dark magics. Um, and also I didn't find any lying around in my pantry. So instead, I decided to make the skull mat with frost. Using compressed nitrogen, I froze the surface of the Terminator and that didn't work at all. Don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry. No, here's the actual solution. Protein. 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 Awesome, I love protein. Flour would probably work just as well, but protein powder is finer, so it's easier to dust and I've noticed that it's very prone to static buildup, so it goes absolutely everywhere when you handle it, and that's a good thing for once. So I strap some fishing line around part one of the skull, and then I dust protein all over it, as well as the floor and the ceiling and the walls in my entire home. Then we start snapping away. As a rule, you want your light as even as possible, with no shadows or reflections, and your background to be as plain as possible. So that's why I'm set up in front of this huge window, and using a projector screen as my background. Now, let's just start with the test first, just to see if it's gonna work the way I hope it will. I still need to make sure to get a full 360 of the entire object, sides, top and bottom, altogether a meager 56 images, not enough to get a good mesh out of it, but enough to see if dusting it with protein would work at all. I use a program called Easy Photogrammetry by uh, Elliot Morgenstern, and I could not imagine a better name for it. It's free, you press a single button and the 3D model pops out the other end. Now years ago I used to use uh, Agisoft Photoscan, now called Metashape, which is some pro level shit, but there are all kinds of different options, for all kinds of different levels of control and all kinds of computers. But let's just see how easy photogrammetry does first. Really not that bad for 56 pictures of a shiny dome. Now couple of problems with this. Dangling it from a fishing line is both super annoying to work with and it makes the pictures very blurry. So let's put the skull down and snap some better pictures. Now as a rule, I try to take one picture every 10 degrees of rotation. So one full 360 from the top, one full 360 from the middle and one full 360 from the bottom. That's supposed to be 108 pictures in total. And importantly, I take those pictures with a small aperture to get as deep focus as I can. You can't recognize features if they're all blurry. So that's what you should be doing. However, I'm using the sun as my light source and evening is coming. So I'm on a bit of a tight schedule. Plus, I am too lazy to measure how many degrees I rotate a thing. So here I am with only 49 images. Oops. But they are sharp though, and with a bit of faith in our boy Pythagoras, we get this. It's a mesh with solid detail, just don't look at the back of it. Now, let's quickly do the same for the bottom of the skull, before the sun tucks in for bed. Not 
not too shabby. That'll certainly do for something's gonna be covered mostly with torn flesh. Right, what was the other thing? Oh yeah. No matter, it's not for me anyway, it's for my little Terminator. But I do need to figure out how to keep that jacket in its shape, so I can actually put it onto my Z800 Terminator. Okay, next time I'm just gonna buy a blow-up door, because this took me painfully long painfully because I also cut myself several times on the cardboard but at least turning this one 3d should be a lot easier because it's not literal chrome and since it's leather I imagine it comes with a lot of natural micro texture which I suspect will make it pretty perfect to identify features on okay maybe not um, so this is the problem with a very easy program it's lovely when it works, but when it doesn't work, it doesn't give you much clue or many options as to why or what to do about it. But here's my guess. It could be not enough data. I'm still using very few pictures, 57 of them, and the jacket's quite a bit more complex than the skull and would need more pictures to solve correctly. Or could be too much conflicting data. Since the jacket is bigger than the skull, I also had to use a shorter lens and I'm getting a lot more stuff in the background of the shot. And that must be confusing for a poor, poor algorithm. Or it's the lens distortion of my 24mm lens doing it, which I think is unlikely because I think there's a way for the software to work around that. Worst case, it's the jacket itself changing shape as I'm rotating it because it's quite literally just stuffed with cardboard and a couple of jumpers. I can really only fix the first three of those and the easiest problems to fix are number two and number three, so let's start there. With the conflicting data, I can simply cut out, snip, snip, snip. Uh, lens distortion, I can compensate for. And then I can summon Pythagoras Ghost again and see how he does. Okay. So this result tells me that it was probably a little bit of too much wrong data, but mostly not enough of the right data. And you know what that means. Protein. 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 Awesome. I love protein. 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 Okay, so even with the protein, this is the result we get. But all is not lost. Not yet. First, I can get rid of the conflicting data. Clear up that background. And then I did shoot some extra close-up shots for added detail for certain areas. And I can add those to the set, making it a total of 132 photos. And that leaves us with this result. It's not great, but it's certainly okay-ish. And with a bit of cleanup, I'd say we've got a pretty good shrimp pie. Now, true and Titan patrons get both of these raw scans to play around with. If you're a member, don't forget to download. Let me know what you want to make a 3D model of. And until next time, stay in motion.